Okay, we're going to solve this in two ways. And uh, the first will be just using the information they gave us here. And then the second way, we'll try to use a graphing calculator to see how it goes. So the graph of f of x is shown below. So here's the graph of some function. It's, I'm going to note it's probably cubic because cubic functions typically look like this, which I call a squiggle wiggle. And they want to know which equation gives us this graph. So, um, so what I would notice is that what, what they're really asking you about are the, the key features of this graph. And they do this a lot. So if you see a cubic function or some weird squiggle thing here, you have to look at the key features. And the typical kinds of key features we talk about here are maxes, relative maxes and mins. This is a relative max. I say it's a relative max because it's the maximum for a certain domain. Domain is a fancy word for um, the interval of the x values you're looking at. Clearly, like if you keep going, this graph keeps going, it's going to go up, 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 up. There, it goes up infinitely, maybe, right? We don't know about it yet, but if it keeps going, this is only a, this max over here is only a maximum in this domain. Same thing with this relative min right here, that's important too. That's a helpful key feature. But in this graph, we're not using that key feature. The other one we're looking at are the roots or the zeros. Um, that's these points right here. They're called roots or zeros because of the fact that they cross the x-axis and y is always zero at these points. What does that mean here? Well, in each of these expressions, they're trying to show you what the roots are. I notice that the root here for this point is, what is that? Negative 1, 2, 3, 4, so it's negative 4, 0. This point right here is negative 2, 0. And this point right here is 1, 0. So those are our roots. So our roots are, let's write this down, negative 4, negative 2, and 1. Okay, so the idea is that in these equations, you want to figure out which equation has these three roots. Now, the key idea is that the height of the graph is zero at the roots. So f of x, which is the height of the graph, or the output, is zero. So let's just look at the first example. We have zero would be equal to x plus two times x squared plus three x minus four. So logically, to get zero, you're multiplying these numbers. The first number is x plus two times the second number here, x squared plus 3x minus 4, to get a product of 0. In other words, when I multiply these two and I get 0, how can that happen? It can only happen if the first number is 0, so if x plus 2 equals 0, or the second number equals 0, x squared plus 3x minus 4 equals 0, or they both equal 0. So in order for this first, like, think about it, right? So 0 times something, is 0 times anything is 0. So if one of them is 0, you're set, but they're both 0, the product is also 0. So what values of x would give us 0 here? In the first equation, if x is negative 2, we get 0 because negative 2 plus 2 is 0. In the second equation, it's a little bit tougher. And, and notice here, negative 2, we've got one of the roots. When x is negative 2, the height of this graph is 0. So far, this one's working. The second one, we have to factor it a little bit. So when you factor these things here, these quadratics, here I start with x and x. I need a product of negative 4 and a sum of 3. That's how these work. You're looking for products of the last constant that add up to the, the, the coefficient of the x, the middle term. So what, what two numbers multiply to negative 4 uh, but add to 3? Well, that is positive 4 and negative 1. Now, this is a repeated process. Two numbers that multiply to 0, what values of x would give you a 0? Well, the first one is when x is negative 4, and the second one is when x is 1. That would still give us a product of 0. So that means one of the roots for this equation is negative 4, the other one's 1, and the last one's negative 2, which means choice 1, right, is our answer. So we got lucky there. And that's how I would just go through these to look at the roots. Now, if you don't like that way, here's another technique. We'll use the graphing calculator. It's still a little bit tedious, but we go to our, our y equals button. We'll clear off old equations I have here. And I'll enter in this, this equation. So if I, oops, if I put parentheses, right, parentheses, do the x button here, x plus two, close parentheses, times x squared plus three x minus four. So I'm entering my, my full equation. 
and go to graph, let's see what happens. So let's try to get a graph, it's not looking too good, so I'll do zoom standard. So here's a zoom button. Choice six is standard. Usually gives me a better picture, and there's our function. Now, if, if we know the context here that we're looking for the roots, we can do that pretty quickly by hitting second, trace. So we're looking for roots, which it's calling zeros here. So choice two is for zeros. And it's just gonna ask me for points to the left and to the right of the root that we're looking for. So if I go all the way to the left, and I'll just show you one of these. All right, here's my cursor. Keep going, going. I pick a point left bound, a point to the left of the graph, left of the root, excuse me. Hit enter. I go to the right of the root, enter, and then hit again, and it gives me the first zero, negative four and zero. And I can keep doing that to find my roots and then work backwards to figure out uh, what my equation would be. In other words, if I know these are my roots, negative four, negative two, and one, I know that we have to have x plus two, because the first root, uh, in order to get a zero, x have to equal negative two. Negative two plus two is zero. That's my first root. Then I have to see, okay, does this factor to negative four and one? Um, and I, I could do it that way. Or, I mean, if you've got the graph right here, if you check each of the roots, you can see that this is the exact same graph. But then you can check your relative mins and maxes. So if you go to second trace, go to max choice four, you go to the left and right of the relative max that we had, left, right, and then it asks you to guess, yes, guess. And here it'll give me an estimation of the relative maximum, which I seem to have right here in the graph. It's about negative one, two, three, and four, very close. And the same thing would be true for this minimum here. You go to second trace to get a minimum, and then you would see it down here. And you can match this equation that you have to do the calculator to the graph that you see. So it's more of a roundabout way, but it still works. All right, I hope this helps. Thanks.